Welcome to the media chat room where the celebrity headlines are talking. And the headlines have been talking all night ever since Drake released his diss song, Drop and Give Me 50, which diss all his ops, which seemingly is everybody that's hot in the game right now. He had a little something something for Future, Metro Boomin, The Weeknd, Rick Ross, but he really had it out for the good kid in the mad city. Yep, K dot 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 Lamar. And everything he said was blatant and direct to each one of them. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and break down all the beats and go over some of the lyrics so you know exactly who he was talking about plus we got the reactions from a little bit of everybody so make sure you stay tuned but first thing first i'm gonna need you to go ahead like and share the video with everyone that you know subscribe to the channel so that you can become an official chatty patty lover and i promise you're gonna love it here and last but not least turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live also for the month of april we're celebrating reaching over 2,000 subscribers with a weekly giveaway so make sure you head to our community wall for the details and make sure you watch the entire video so that you can find our chat word of the week now let's go ahead and Break down this beef why it's hot in the kitchen. Now, first on the chopping block is Future. Now, Drake and Future had an on and off again relationship for quite some time. They was cool, then beef, and then cool again. Now they beef. The first incident started in 2011 when Drake was actually featured on one of Future's songs, Tony Montana. But he actually did not make the appearance in the video, which made Future a little spicy because he had so many people wanting to be on that song. But he wasn't really tripping like that, like that. So they continued to be cool, even recording and being in sessions with each other. So much so that Future to say he's the one who actually inspired Drake started from the bottom now we're here. However, your boy Drizzy did not give Future any kind of pub. That's publishing credit, y'all. Which actually went on and did Drake some good numbers. And in the music industry, that mean a big check. Eventually, they worked it out and moved on and started collaborating on music together. Even doing shows with Future rocking out over your merch. I mean, at this point in time, when Drake was hopping on a Future song, he was even dissing Kendrick Lamar. On a remix of Future's song, S-H-I-T, Drake actually sung Kendrick. But oh, what does a 10-year difference make? Because now Kendrick is dissing Drake on a future record which is what kicked this beef up a notch so go ahead and pin that because we're gonna come back to that so in 2015 drake future and metro Boomin dropped the mixtape what a time to be alive and it actually did real well for all three of them so much so that they were eventually supposed to drop a part two however this collaboration never happened instead drake started to collaborate with 21 Savage. now maybe this didn't happen because allegedly drake and future was messing with the same girl princess diana and maybe future was pillow talking with her because something got back to drake on the More M's record, Drake said ninjas ain't got love for the boy, so they fake it. Crack a couple of jokes to some bees on some snake-ish. What happened to that ninja claiming OVO? We traded him. Then on a Future and Metro booming album, We Don't Trust You, he made a song called Magic Don Wine, aka Princess Diana. So is this Future and Metro booming album that sparks everything, setting everything on fire? So let's get into some of the lyrics from We Don't Trust You so we can know who Drake is responding to in Drop and Give Me 50. So in verse two of the song title from the album future says you a ninja number one fan dog sneak dissing i don't understand dog pillow talking acting like a fed dog i don't need another fake friend dog can't be by no chick because we shan dog and your feelings ninja why you playing dog so this verse is directly referring to drake calling them dog a million times remember drake last album was called for all the dogs he also references pillow talking which future is saying you the one who pillow talking trying to get information about me this be definitely ain't about no chick because you already know we sharing but you just stay in your feelings so drake responds back saying i could never be nobody number one fan your first number one i had to put in your hand you cats can't get booked outside america for now i'm out in tokyo because i'm big in japan i'm the hit maker y'all depend on so drake saying how can i be the fan when i'm the one who out here helping you you got your first number one hit because of me y'all saw it about that album we're supposed to collab on depending on me to get y'all another hit and how can i be a fan of you y'all ain't even internet national i'm all in japan with these heads y'all can't even get out the state now y'all let's scurry on down to canada so we can chew up some of this beef between drake and the weekend or should we call that few ham because y'all know canadians love their bacon <laughs> anyway their beef stems from business and booty aka a female y'all so business wise when the weekend first came out they collaborated a lot by way of features writing and producing music and these collaborations were supposed to lead to a deal where the weekend was signed under drake as a writer bringing both of their labels together 
together, which is OVO by Drake and EXO by The Weeknd. Ultimately, this deal ends up falling through because The Weeknd decided he didn't want to sign with Drake. Instead, he went into partnership with Republic Records. He was able to leverage a partnership with the record label, which ultimately becomes more lucrative than a deal. And this is where The Weeknd officially launches EXO Records. Then years later, Drake was seen out with The Weeknd's ex, Bella Hadid, leaving people to think that him and her hooked up. After being seen out in public together, Drake drops a song called Sandra's Road. And in one of the verses, he says, my house is full of supermodels just like Muhammad Hadid, who is the father of Bella Hadid. Now we know that this one line can mean two things. He have a lot of supermodels in his house because he's Drake and he stay with a lot of women. Or he had Bella running all up and through there. But the latter of the two then take shots at The Weeknd, making people think that he's hooking up with his ex-girlfriend, which is who The Weeknd was with from 2015 to 2019. Now let's get into the shots that was fired at Drake from The Weeknd on Future and Metro Boomin sequel album we still don't trust you so on the song all to myself they could never diss my brother's baby when they got leaks in their operation i thank god i never signed my life away they shooters making tiktok got us laughing in the lambo so the weekend is saying we know what's going on because people on your team is leaking information and knowing what i know i'm glad i ain't signed that bad deal that you tried to put me in now i don't know which one of drake's shooters is making videos on tiktok but that last line about him laughing and being joked out mimics his response to drake after this song started going viral but we're gonna go ahead and pin that because we will definitely circle back when we talk about everybody's response so here's drake this to the weekend so he said yeah i'm the sixth guy i'm the front runner y'all ninja manager was chubb's little blunt runner claim the six and you boys ain't even from me. and when you boys got rich you had to run from me cash blowing able bread out here tricking ish we do for itches he doing for ninjas so drake saying he is a guy in toronto and although they around here claiming that they from toronto they're not even really from there and once they got rich they couldn't even really come back home and while the weekend up there talking about somebody in drake camp drake saying somebody in your camp is sus because he ain't doing nothing but blowing money on dude flying them out buying them cars and jewelry now that we done hopped out the Lambo, go ahead and get cleaned up so that we can hop in the Maybach. Cruising all through Florida so we can understand what's going on with Drake and Rick Ross. Now these two was Ace Boone Coon for a while. Dating back to collaborations ever since 2009. But according to Rick Ross, he officially stopped messing with Drake in 2021. Now Chatty Patty, go ahead and pin this because we are gonna circle back around once we get into Rick Ross' response to Drake's diss. But Drake was on notice and knew what time it was when he saw Rick Ross bump into Kendrick Lamar diss towards him. On the song like that from We Don't Trust You. In addition to Rick Ross being featured on the We Don't Trust You album, which at this point we definitely know is about Drake. Now Future and Drake ain't the only one who be pillow talking. Cause back in January, Rick Ross baby mama Tia Kemp told us that Rick Ross was talking about Drake to her. And although she is funny and very much a character, she obviously was telling the truth. And seeming to be the epitome of, I might tell you a joke, but I'd never tell you a lie. Because We Don't Trust You was released March 22nd, 2024. And therefore, she wouldn't have known about the beef that was about to happen. So go ahead, Tia, and spill the beans again for all the ones who thought you was just telling a joke. And Drake, I want you to call me, because I got something to tell you personally. Mm -hmm. He talk about your family, but any racist too. He, he talk about Drake like a dog. Oh, Girl, he got a baby from a Russian woman look just like Drake. Beautiful little boy. Same age, one of that girl got them three churns from, baby. Uh, but why last baby. would Rick Ross tell you break on Drake business, allegedly? Because he pillow talk with me every all through the night when he wants sandwiches and wake up. His sleep pattern out. Now let's go ahead and get into the diss. So in Drake's diss to Ross, he says, I might take your latest girls and cuff her like Ricky. Can't believe he jumped in. This ninja turning 50. Every song that made it on the chart he got from Drizzy. Spend that little check you got and stay out my business. Worry about whatever you got going on with. You fill in the blank. But to me, it sounds like he did a puff. And so you know that mean puffy, a.k.a. P. Diddler. So y'all, let's break this down. Drake said, you want the smoke? Now I got it for you. And I'm going to go ahead and take your latest chick, Christina Mackey. Now, she was one of Rick Ross' last public girlfriends. After she publicly confirmed that they were no longer together, Drake sent her tickets to his show in Miami. And not only will he cuff her like she a sneaky link, he going to also cuff her like he a correctional officer like Rick Ross. And Ninja, you around here picking size on beef you almost 50 years old plus you ain't even popping like that every song that's on the chart you got it from me take that money i put in your pocket and go mine yours but a matter of fact you really should be worrying about what you got going on with diddy because girl you know tia told us that rick ross on some of them videotapes that was confiscated from diddy will i want you to talk talk don't be scared now no diddy huh you scared now huh? i know y'all on them tapes freaky bitch. i know years. Ten churn half. It's time to show them churns now. I ain't gonna let off you. 
Now you know Rick Ross and Diddy is cool. And Rick Ross said the reason why he stopped talking to Drake was because of French Montana, who is Ace Boom Coon with Diddy. But just hold your horses because we gonna get into some more of that when we talk about Rick Ross' response. Now he also threw a little jab at Travis Scott, which came because Travis Scott was amping Future and Metro Boomin to go ahead and play that song like that, which is a clear Drake diss, at their Rolling Loud performance a few weeks ago. Travis is also a feature on the We Don't Trust Your album, which shows his distrust for Drake after Drake tried to distance himself from the Astral World tragedy that happened in 2021, which is a large concert that's thrown by Travis Scott in Houston. So Drake said, rolling live stage, y'all would turn. That was slick as hell. Stuff will probably change if your baby mama starts to kiss and tell. Basically saying, I saw you. You was real eager for them to play that song on stage. But you definitely wouldn't like me if your baby mama started talking and told you about me. Okay, so boom, we about to get into the beef that he got with Metro Boomin, which stems back to the partial beef that he had with Future. Remember, they were supposed to do the sequel to With a Time to Be Alive together, which Metro Boomin would have executive produced, but Drake chose not to. And right before the album came out, Metro Boomin tweeted, Once you pick a side, stay there. Hashtag, we don't trust you. So in the dish, Drake said it with his chest. Metro, shut your old ass up and make some drums, ninja. Meaning you got a whole this album and you ain't doing nothing but making beat. Dot, 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 dot. Yep, K dot this last one is for you when actually the whole song was really meant for you now let's go ahead and get into their weird beef which is not beef but then again it is beef so their first collaboration was in 2011 on drake's take care album kendrick was on an interlude called buried alive then in 2012, Drake took Kendrick Lamar on his Paradise tour with him, along with ASAP Rocky. And of course, when Kendrick Lamar dropped his album, Good Kid, Mad City, in 2012, Drake got a feature with the popular song, Poetic Justice. But things took a turn in 2013, when Kendrick Lamar was featured on one of Big Sean's songs called Control. But basically, he called out every rapper in the game, saying that he was trying to murder him on the beat. Now, there was no slick dissing and no coming sideways. He named everybody who he thought had balls. Which included J. Cole, Big Crit, Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J. Electron, Tyler, and Mac Miller. Now remember, this was on Big Sean's album and he named Big Sean. So it wasn't intended as beef, but Kendra definitely let everybody know who he was coming for. And it really made a lot of noise making everybody talk about, again, who is the best rapper alive. And clearly, Kendra thought he was that dude. But Drake said, die, 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 no. So when looking at it, he really actually gave a backhanded compliment. Saying, dude, you good and you popping, but you not the best. And it was just kind of down here from there. Because again, remember, Drake took Kendrick on tour with him. In addition to featuring him on his album. And he had not signed a major deal at that point. So Drake kind of felt slighted. Here's an interview that Drake did addressing the verse. That, that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. So it's like, he didn't come on there on some wild, like, yeah, I'm in New York. Everybody don't look at me. Now. <laughs> like, I'm the king. So it, it was... Things it's like I almost wish he had come in there on that shit. Kind of lost like a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really f everybody, then it needs to be f everybody. It just can't be halfway for the sake of the people. But you know what I'm saying? Like for oh. real, that's just how I feel. And that verse was used to actually divide everybody, always pitting them against each other as number one, which ultimately broke up the relationship between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, leaving everybody to really question personal relationships. But over time, everybody consistently said the top three in hip hop were J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and Drake, naming them to be the big three. So on the Fusion and Metro Boomin album, the song titled Like That features Kendrick Lamar, and he clearly positions himself as number one again. But in saying that, he says, Mother F the big three ninja is just big me. So not only is he saying F the people that people are comparing me to, he's doing it on the album that's meant to come for Drake. Kendrick also says, and your best work is a light pack. Ninja Prince outlived Mike Jack. For all your dogs getting buried, that's okay with all these nines. He gonna see Pet Cemetery. So Kendrick's saying, you don't even really come hard when you think you coming. And you might have was the first one to do it like Michael Jackson. But I'm gonna be here long after. Like Prince. Because ultimately, the best is the last one that's standing. And anybody that's with you, they getting buried. By K-Dot, who a K-9. Because I'm a big dog, period. And all those dog references tied into Drake's last album, For All the Dogs. So let's go ahead and get into Drake's response. The diss song by Drake is titled Drop and Give Me 50. 
which signifies push-up. And this is why people are saying the song is mainly directly targeted at Kendrick Lamar. Because a few months ago on the blogs, he was seen doing backyard push-ups. So here are some of the direct shots that were sent to Kendrick. You won't ever take no chain off of us. How the F you big stepping with a size seven men's on? This the bark with the bite ninja, what's up? I know my picture on the wall when y'all cook up. Extortion, baby, whole career you been shook up which is referring to Kendra's small stature. In a flop of his last album, Mr. Morrell and the Big Steppers. He said, I'm barking back at you to let you know that I'm ready to bite. And I'm out in the open with it, so you know I'm coming for you. He also said, I'm your motivation. Every time you go in the booth, you gotta see me because I'm what you strive for. Your last one, Brick, you really not on ish. They make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit. Pull out your contracts because we got to see the split. The way you doing splits is your pants might rip. Okay, so here he's talking about a contract. One he had with his old record label. And his splits for profit is so tight, he ain't got no room to breathe. You better do that mother effing show inside the bitty. On room five, need a verse, you better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifty. So he's referring to the two collaborations that he did. One with Maroon 5 and one with Taylor Swift. You ain't in no big three. Scissor got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. So we gonna go ahead and pin this because Scissor does respond. Like your labor boy, you in the scope right now. And you gonna feel the aftermath of what I write down. I'm at the top of the mountain, so you tight right now. Just to have this talk with your ass, I had to hype down. So he's playing off the word in a scope because that's the record label that Kendrick is signed to, which is over the record label aftermath. In addition to him saying that what I'm saying is going to be pressure, you going to feel everything I'm saying. You mad because I'm number one at the top of the mountain. And in order for me to address you, I got to come down to your level because you the best at the bottom. Big difference between Mike then and Mike now. What the F is this? A 20 versus one ninja? What's a prince to a king? He a son ninja. Get more love in the city that you from ninja. So Drake is basically referencing when Kendrick was talking about Michael Jackson and Prince. And the truth of the matter is Michael Jackson legacy is even bigger now that he's dead. Even though Michael Jackson died before Prince. And he big son in him. Saying you could go ahead and be Prince but I'll be Michael because he was the king. And that statement is proven even more so because I get more love from the people in your city than you. So Drake went in because then he starts to reference Kendrick Lamar fiance. I'll be with some bodyguards like Whitney. He's really referencing the bodyguard with Whitney Houston. But like I said, Kendrick's fiance name is Whitney. And although he said Whitney be with the bodyguards as if she's smashing them, I think he's really just referencing to the fact that he's protected like Whitney was in the bodyguard. So you really can't even touch me if you try. And that effing song y'all got did not start the beef with us. This ish been brewing in the pot. Now I'm heating up. I don't care what cold thing. That dot ish was weak as hell. Champagne tripping. He is not effing easing up. So I told y'all when Kendra said F the big three, J. Cole responded to the diss in a song called Seven Minute Drill. Dissing Kendrick Lamar, but then going on stage and publicly taking it back to only then have the song removed from streaming platforms. So Drake saying that little weak song you put out, that ain't what started this beef. I've been feeling this way for a long time. So I don't care what J. Cole apologized and said, that's him, it ain't me. I'm standing on business, your stuff is whack. And people around here saying Champagne Poppy is tripping, but he ain't easing up. His foot is on the gas. And he ain't letting up. He said, Cornball, your show money is merch money feed to us. I'ma let you ninjas work it out because I seen enough. So Drake, like, I'm a big deal. The money you out here making from shows, I make it from people buying my merchandise. And even though it took all y'all to come after me, I done seen what y'all had to offer and it ain't nothing. Now, baby, the internet was buzzing. And somebody in Drake camp must have worn Rick Ross. Because he dropped a response this in less than three hours. All champagne moments. So Rick Ross replies and says, Ghost Riders, they get the floss, what you could have had. Record label taking a loss, are you in your bag? You a worker waiting to chart, don't make me laugh. Run up on you and snatch your chain, watch you bees bleed. So Rick Ross is basically saying Drake don't even write his own rhyme. So his Ghost Riders actually flossing. And of course, Rick Ross saying he a boss Drake ain't nothing but a worker. So you really can't talk and address me when it comes to money. And I actually hear these record labels taking a loss on you so you ain't in your bag. Or making money like you claim you making money. Getting bullied. Don't walk up on me cause the clip is fully. Like his moves but he never had a fight in school. Always ran another ninja had to write his grooves. Flow is copy and paste. Weezy gave you the juice. Another white boy at the park wanna hang with the crew. So Rick Ross said yeah they got 20 ninjas on you and you getting bullied. But if you act stupid we got something for you. I like his moves, but he ain't about nothing because he never even really had a fight. So anything he say, he capping. Somebody else writing it for him. And he's nothing but a copy and paste image of Lil Wayne. He just a white boy that's around all the cool kids. Let you DM my O, but got B's you can't. Let you get on my songs, it was good for your face. Now B Ninjas is on, ain't no room for debate. So he's saying, yeah, you could go ahead and have Christina Mackey. 
The one who I told y'all Drake sent concert tickets to. But he actually got some loyal ones who ain't gonna even talk to Drake. And all the features he let him get on was just basically to give him some street cred. Making him more appealing to the black people. And from this point on, it's war. Then he went on to elaborate why he stopped following Drake. Which was because he sent French Montana a cease and desist letter. Which stopped him from putting out songs after the Astral World event with Travis Scott. While also clowning him saying that he got a nose job. Because he really don't want to be black. So Drake Drake definitely heard the response from Rick Ross because he posted screenshot text messages from his mama. She basically saying, Aubrey, what is going on? Everybody around here saying you got a nose job. But when I saw you last, you look the same. And you actually know I want a nose job, so why you ain't take me with you? So he told his mama, if I would have got a nose job, I would have took you with me. But that's nothing but rumors coming from this guy named Rick Ross. And we actually could have got a two for one deal. He taking Manjaro shots, so he haven't eaten in days, so he kind of loopy. And it actually turned him mad and racist. And now he's out here performing at primes for money. It's bad. But don't worry about it because I'm going to handle it. Now y'all know Manjaro shots is for diabetics. Which is also prescribed to patients in order to lose weight. And girl you already know Rick Ross baby mama Tia Kemp already told us he had diabetes. I already told y'all Tia Kemp might tell you a joke but she'll never tell you a lie. Alexa do Rick Ross have diabetes? After he developed type 1 diabetes in his mid-30s, Ross became intensely interested in the science of health and nutrition. Now girl, I already told you, Tia told Drake that Rick Ross been talking about. So she actually responded to the diss too, telling Drake once again that he need to call her because she got some stuff to tell him. And y'all already know she likes to go with Rick Ross ops. Because remember back in the day when him and 50 Cent got into it, she ran up to 50 and let 50 know what was up. Drake told yeah, to drop it, get him 50. <laughs> he can't. He probably could give him four. I'm just playing. I don't know what that big fat fish could do. Drake, call me boots. I got something to tell you. <laughs> I ain't lying. Now at the beginning of the video, I told y'all to go ahead and pin some things, so we about to circle back to it. So The weekend responded just by posting up a picture of him laughing. Now remember when Drake said, pipe squeak, pipe down, you ain't no big three? SZA got you wiped down. And SZA responded immediately. Here's what she posted. Did I see? Can I get I did she never apologized. Now, 50 Cent also responded, but to his credit, Drake did mention him in the song. Drake said, Ninjas really got me out here talking like I'm 50. And y'all know that mean reckless. But you know, to 50 Cent, that's a badge of honor. So 50 Cent said, All you ninjas got smoked by a light skinned ninja. Laugh out loud, y'all better get high as an MF -er and come up with something. Even Uma Thurman had to hop in on the action. Now, if y'all remember, Drake ended up posting a picture of Uma Thurman from the movie Kill Bill when it was her versus everybody. So she posted a picture of her costume asking Drake if he needed it. So, of course, Rick Ross saw that and he started trolling. Getting in on the action, asking, do you think it could fit me? Now, that wasn't all from Rick Ross. He also responded with a video after Drake shared the text messages between him and his mama. Saying that Drake has had a BBL in addition to having fake ab surgery. Me waking up from a nap, I just realized BBL Drizzy called his mommy on me. Uh, he shared their text messages between each other. Uh, Cupcake Drake. Tell your mama you stayed out past your curfew, white boy. You wanted to hang at the park with the niggas, smoke weed with the niggas while we washed our old school Chevys. White boy, you got a Chevy, white boy? I doubt it. But anyway, big nose. Big nose. Boy, you had 25% body fat with a carved out six piece. Stop. We know what time it is. That shit 40 bands. Stop. But tell your mama. Well, in Miami, we say, old girl, tell your old girl she a beautiful lady. I told you that before and I meant that. But you tell your mama, white boy, you stayed out at the park too late. And you can't call her when you get in this shit. This shit too deep to call your mama, white boy. And again, unfortunately, it did not end there. Now, you know, Drake record label Young Money is underneath Cash Money Records. So, of course, Birdman, a.k.a. Stunner, had to jump in. He tagged Drake and said, I'm riding with you for life. I got your back. Surprise party. And Rick Ross ain't never backing down from no trolling. So here was his response to Birdman. Hey, hey. That's what Birdman house was at right over there. Stunner. 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 That's where your house was at right there. Stunner. 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 Stunner.
Go the little the island the over there. Give range the trillion, fuck. And my grill be slugged up. My heart feel with. Now, y'all already know that was easy shot. Because Baby and Rick Ross still got beef from when Lil Wayne and Baby was going through separating record labels. And Rick Ross was definitely very vocal that he stood with Lil Wayne. Talking and speaking very greasy on Stunner. Now, Chatty Patties, that was a long one. So, if you watched the video all the way to the end, make sure you get in the comments and drop the 100 emoji. Because I will definitely shout you out on the next video. We will be watching this story closely to see if we get any more responses and disc records. So, definitely stay tuned. Now, Chatty Patties, it's time to hop in those comments. But first, here's the chat word of of the week media m-e-d-i-a media and don't forget to check out our community wall so you can know how to enter into next week's giveaway not chat the pad is this time to hop in those comments let me know what you think about this whole entire beef between everybody do you think most of this was a misunderstanding or is it everybody just ego tripping and with the disc records already being made tell me who y'all think had the best disc record so far but most importantly i want to know if y'all think kendrick will reply back do you think drake went too far by mentioning kendrick lamar's fiance's name whitney and now that j cole has issued a public apology to kendrick lamar do you think that Drake now has an issue with him? Get in those comments and let me know all your thoughts and opinions. And before you go, make sure you like and share this video with everyone that you know. Also, subscribe to the channel so that you can become an official Chatty Patty lover. And I promise, you're going to love it here. And don't forget to turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live. Now, Chatty Patty, you already know how I do First it. things first, I'm hopping in the comments to see what you had to say. And it's back to scrubbing the headlines so that I can bring you all another story. So that's going to be all for now. And until next time.